this video is part two of exponent properties. All right. So a new property. Suppose we had two to the third and it, we had it squared. Well, that would be two over three times two over three. And if we multiply, that gives us four over nine. And if you look back, two squared is four and three squared is nine. So just like we had the product raised to a power, we can say that we have quotient raised to a power, we just distribute the power to everything top and bottom inside. So again, we're going to distribute the exponents. So let's try. A squared is going to be cubed and over 3 and it's going to be cubed. So we have an answer of a squared cubed. We multiply when it's a power raised to a power. So a to the 6 and 3 cubed happens to be 27. All right. When you have a negative, there's a couple of things you can think of. You could rewrite this as negative 3. Get rid of that negative and just put it with one of your numbers. Or this is really negative 1. So negative 1 cubed is going to be negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1, times another negative 1 will be negative 1. Because we took a negative times itself three times, we ended up with a negative. And if we, back earlier we had one, I think, where if I had negative 1 and I had it squared, well, a negative times a negative is going to be a positive. So there's a rule that says when we have an odd exponent and we're dealing with a negative inside the parentheses, then we know our answer is going to be negative. And if we're dealing with an even exponent, like this 2, and we have a negative inside our parentheses, no matter what it is inside there, if it's a negative, then we know that we're going to end up with a positive. I do this one using our rule. So I'm going to think about the negative here, and because it's an odd power, that tells me that my answer is going to be negative. So my fraction is still going to have a negative in front of it. And then I'm going to have 3 that's going to be cubed. And I'm going to have m that's going to be cubed. And on the bottom, I'm going to have 4 that's going to be cubed. And I'm going to have n that's going to be cubed. 3 cubed is 27 m cubed is just going to be m cubed, 4 cubed is 64, and n cubed is just going to be n cubed. And finally, everything inside gets raised to that power. So 2 to the 4th, my base of 5 gets raised to the 4th, my base of x cubed gets raised to the 4th, every factor inside there gets raised to the fourth power. So 2 to the fourth is 16. 5 to the fourth, so 625 down the bottom. And then x cubed raised to the fourth power, remember that means that we're going to multiply our exponents. And that gives us x to the 3 times 4 or 12. All right, let's expand. Let's do some expanding here. 8 factors of y, why did I pick such big numbers? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 3 factors of y on the bottom. And I want to simplify. Remember when you simplify, if you have a common factor top and bottom, that gives you 1. So there's 1, there's 1, there's 1, and I'm only left with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 factors of y on the top. If you look at this, the 8's bigger, so I would expect my leftovers to be on the top. I'll try again. 6 factors of a, 4, 5, 6 factors of a, over 4 factors of a, common factor top and bottom, we have 4 of them, and I'm left with a squared. So what did we do? I started out with an 8 and a 3 and ended up with 5. 
I started out with 6 and 4 and ended up with 2. So we could say that when you have the same base and you're dividing, you take your base and you subtract your exponents. And I want to put a little caveat here and say that you need to subtract top minus the bottom. Let's practice. This is b to the 9 minus 4. How hard is that? 9 minus 4 is 5. This is 2 to the 10 minus 6, so 2 to the 4. Now, when I have this, here's my same base dividing, but I also have these numbers that I also have to divide. Don't cheat your numbers. So negative 8 divided by 4 is going to be negative 2. And then my y's will be y to the 6 minus 2. The final answer is negative 2y to the 4.